I use the rules of three a lot to make a plan for if I'm ever lost or stranded. The first rule of three is three minutes without air. I've got air, that's not a concern. The next rule is three hours being exposed. So, that is my next concern, exposure. Not allowing my core temperature to get too high or too low. I'm gonna show you what I have in this kit for those reasons. So this kit here, I wanted to add the gear that I would not be fire dependent. With the gear in this kit, I can get down to just under the freezing point and not be fire dependent. I usually use the snug pack court system, which is rated for minus five Celsius. But in here, I showed a more budget friendly option. And I'm gonna show you what I think is very important, especially for me in this environment. This pack right here weighs right around the 10 pound mark. Like I said, I do not have a problem throwing this on my back and going. It is not cumbersome. It is not a whole lot of weight that I worry about. Then I'm gonna pass it to the side. This here has everything I need for most situations. So, it's very important to have something that you do not mind using. So, in here, this here is a zero Celsius sleeping bag. This one here costs about $40. There's many, many types out there that are compact like this, that are around the zero Celsius mark. And it's a very good option. I have that. I also have a Soul Escape Bivy. Now, by adding these together, I have increased my temperature. And I've also become windproof and waterproof with this system right there. Very good to keep your core temperature anything above zero degrees. You can use this and you wouldn't need a fire. Anything below, you can have a fire in conjunction with these and you can save on the size of your fire and the resources you'll need to get you by. What I've also got here is an inflatable air mat. Now this sleeping pad, it's uh, fairly lightweight, very compact, but it saves me the time of having to make a debris bed or make a bow bed. So another very important piece of gear, those three right there, I can survive many nights just with that. Now if it was going to rain, I've got a 8x6 poly tarp in here. Now this one here is a heavy duty one. But it can, it's far superior than a lot of tarps because of the strength of it. You can do so much with a poly tarp. But as you see, it's still nice and compact and lightweight. So right there... I have a very good shelter system and it's not fire dependent. But if I want reflective, if I want a quick wrap around and such and add more warmth, I have a double sole heat sheet as well. And if I want a super shelter type, I also have an 8x6 clear plastic sheet. Many, many configurations and shelter setups I can use with those. 
and they don't weigh a whole lot. I also carry a poncho, so if it does start raining, I can keep dry. Keeping dry, you're going to stay a lot warmer, and it's very important. So I have a lot here that works around keeping my core temperature regulated. Very important because that can be one of your deadliest concerns out here is keeping that core temperature regulated. Now, using a pack like this, like I said, a lot of people don't carry all this, but if you're serious about surviving, you should make a pack up that works with your own skill set and your own environment. Like I mentioned, I don't like to be fire dependent. So, that is why I carry this gear. Minus 5 or just below freezing and up, I don't need a fire. Very important to me. Very important. So I don't mind carrying this. It's not a whole lot of weight, but it can do so much to keep my core temperature regulated to the proper temperature. I also carry a pair of leather gloves. So if I'm gathering firewood and so on, I can protect my hands. And I also have a wool necker that I can put around my neck to trap heat. And I can put up over my face and so on, just for some added warmth. So with that there, I've got a lot of ways to control my core temperature. But now the next would be fire because fire also helps with controlling your core temperature and it helps with boiling water. So with fire, I've got a ferro rod, I've got a lighter, there's a ferro rod there, I've also got two other ferro rods, I've got a lighter, and I also have a box of, these are called fire sticks, they're a match, but they're, you light them and they're coated with wax, they work rather well, and I also have some man-made tinders for fire. That there can help a lot, I usually use Tinders that I gather out here. I don't normally use this stuff, but it's nice to have if I want to. So having a few ways to start fire can always be a good choice. But now I have my core temperature regulated. I have fire to do so, and I have shelters. I also have various cordages in here, bank line, some paracord and such to construct my shelters and for whatever reason. So that there all covers my core temperature. Next would be water. And what I have here is a large mouth stainless steel water bottle. I've used it as you see many times for boiling water. So that is an option to be used with fire. But I also have a straw type filter that I can stick right in the water. Also a very good option. So water's covered. I also have a few other items that I carry. I carry bug spray. That can be a huge morale boost. If you're being driven crazy by bugs, it can hinder the way you're thinking. Also have a flashlight that this one here I can put on my hat like this and it turns into a headlamp. Many different uses. Uh, this one takes one AA battery and I have an extra battery in here. So for me, very good option to carry. But I also have tent stakes. It makes it for a very quick way to set up my shelter. 
and while I'm walking through here I let them dangle so it warns any kind of animals that I'm in the area that can be a safe way to travel I have a whistle it has a compass it's got a thermometer and a magnifying glass I have that on here got a Ishwash eye station that could be very handy out here small first aid kit a knife this here is the Mora cans bowl and I actually bring out a small fishing kit and some fishing line many many uses for this as well now a lot of this stuff here I would never need it's actually I have more in this kit than what I need but at least I'll have it now what else I carry in here lastly is a piece of poly tarp that I've cut so it's three feet wide and seven feet long that is so I can lay this on direct wet ground and I can lay my sleep gear on top of that it keeps it dry now many many uses for that as well weighs basically nothing folds up fits in my front pocket also I've got some snacks like I said so they can come in very handy and lastly I have my belt knife and a folding saw so this here is my personal survival kit and knowing what I have for gear and how to use it if I'm ever lost or stranded I can have a more positive attitude that can mean a lot in your chances of survival I have basically a minimal camping bag now I have camped minimal for years and I camp year-round in all weather and using that experience being out there and my own survival skill set I created a kit that I will be able to stay alive in most conditions in my environment. I want to thank you for watching and possibly this may get you thinking and may help you with building your own kit. Take care and appreciate it.